By the time that Ralu Tishi was not to be We don't start any event without the prayer, without the help of the Almighty. Here, Dr. Bashi's team always... Less than 0.3 micrometer has to be filtered. That is the way the RF is filtered, then only the infection free, the zero infection can happen. If you have the patients can come out with the best outcome. We, need, we have a 24 patient recovery unit and this is Dr. Professor Bashi Velayam and his team and who has done the successful operation for, for the past 30 years. And to you, I would like to say, I would like to congratulate Dr. Professor Bashi for more than 16,000 cardiac surgeries in India. Out of which 1,500 aortic dissection surgery only. This is actually a record in India, one individual with his team. In some centers would have done with the team. In US also they are done with the group. But he, in India, he is the only person who is able to perform with the best outcome. Therefore, we it's high time to congratulate and give a big applause for this effort. So thank you, sir. With this, I would like to conclude my I would like to welcome all for this event. Thank you. I'm going to play the game. to introduce certain people. It's always a desire for any youngster, marking myself as a youngster, that it's always great for a youngster to, you know, introduce such people. It's always a desire for anybody for that matter. When I was given this chance of uh, calling Dr. Bashi on stage, um, I was jittery. I am still jittery. I don't know what do I speak. So I tried to go through the websites to find out about him. After a few pages, I stopped reading because I entered the wrong page. The wrong page was about his uh, articles published, about his surgery that he has done, about the associations that he has. I mean, those themselves go into pages. He started with his MBBS in 1975 when he took care of the whole body. Then he went into MS when he got into only surgery. Then he got into MCH, he got into only when will the day come when somebody else will also come up and tell that okay we can also do so many surgeries can I have a loud round of applause 
for Dr. Vivi. Mr. Enram, the chief guest of today, Dr. Raju, Dr. Murali. Can you hear? Can you hear? Yeah. Dr. Murali, all my friends and colleagues, and I don't call my patients as patients, as the survivors who have the trust in me and uh, would put their life in my hands with the uh, utmost. So after that, I never looked back because those days, uh, I don't think uh, operations were not, I did as a student, we never uh, have seen. So, first of all, I thank all my people. I can stand in front of you and talk today. Secondly, I thank my parents for educating me. Thirdly, I thank my teacher, Dr. Stanley John, who was responsible for my whole training in Mellor. And the team of doctors who has worked with me in different hospitals, including the doctors, nurses, and paramedical staff, and last but not least, my wife who has tolerated me for the last 40 years <laughs> and supported me in everything, including my presentations uh, in the meetings. Because whenever I go and talk at some meetings, uh, everybody asks, so who does your presentation? I said, my wife does the presentation. <laughs> so uh, she used my very good uh, presentations also. And many of the nights, uh, you know, after I started doing the IOT aneurysm surgery, a lot of colleagues from neighboring states called me when I was acting aneurysm comes. Uh, so one o'clock in the night, I might get a call and uh, I'll be teaching them things. Uh, and so you will be midnight boomer in PC. So <laughs> many nights we have spent uh, sleepless uh, answering questions, going to the hospital at war times. And I come back, I might have to take the key. I, I know sometimes I forget to take the key. I have ran out of the house holding a shirt in my hand, getting into the car and putting my shirt. Once I was almost uh, going to hit uh, on, a, on a truck when I was uh, rushing for emergency, which I never used to do nowadays, just about in my new place. So that is uh, how uh, I started this particular uh, operation of, for IOTA, because uh, in the early 90s, there was uh, no awareness about this problem. The seriousness also people don't know. Now things have gone in a very big way and uh, I was uh, over the weekend last uh, two days, Saturdays and I was in London attending an IOT meeting. And I was uh, very surprised to see that the program which we are going to start, they only just started about two weeks ago. That is a 24 hour program for diagnosing this problem, helping people. One of the survivors of IOT dissection was giving a talk on his experience, uh, what he had when he had chest pain and suddenly he felt unconscious and how he was taken to the casualty and he survived the operation and they took initiative. Another patient from Sweden, same experience he had. So today, internationally, is celebrated as the World Aortic Disease Awareness Day. That is, to create an awareness of this particular disease. It's like a silent uh, problem. You want the regular people who have experienced it, uh, will know how serious it is, how difficult it is for the family members to come to terms with the disease when it affects you without any warnings. So this uh, one of the reasons is to create awareness. Prevention is better than cure. So if you pick up these diseases, in some cases, not always, you can treat them and then give them a good lease of life and we have got the living example, Sister Gladys who did the, I did the aortic artery replacement 25 years ago, taking care of, most important thing also you have to take care of yourself. There's a saying my, my boss used to say, the Lord looks after those only who looks after themselves. And he also used to tell me one important thing is that uh, uh, you are as strong as your weakest link. So you have to have a good chain with all the links strong to develop an aortic team or any team. And the hallmark of a good leader is to, he used to be a very big uh, leader. We keep everybody happy and contented and make sure to get, get work from everybody. That is very important. Make your colleagues take everybody along with you. Then he used to always tell you, can you come all in two ways. You cut the other fellow down. 
or growth of universal thought. So you should never uh, always respect the colleagues so that you know they also will grow with you, there will be mistakes. So I try to practice as much as possible during my deliver. So my idea of starting this center is to to create an awareness and a center so that my colleagues will be able to take over and continue to serve the people because we need a lot of uh, youngsters and this particular uh, speciality of biotic surgery gains tremendous amount of experience. Even after 10 or 12 or even today, a complicated case, I find it sometimes very hard to operate. So, it is very important that I have to make sure I pass on this uh, experience to my colleagues so that even the last uh, month we had a doctor's mother, a pulmonologist's mother, came with an acute diabetic dissection in the casualty and then she almost collapsed, heart stopped. So my colleagues were there, they put the patient on heartland machine. By the time I reached the hospital, she was alive. We operated her in the night, finished the operation at 4 a.m. and she walked home over two weeks ago. So that really happened. So I'm very happy that we are slowly reaching. And when I listen to, I am invited to faculty in so many centers in, in Europe, USA, uh, and of most of the Asian countries. So when I go and represent our team, in fact, we were asked, I was asked to talk the incidents, uh, what do we know about aortic dissection in India? That was the topic you wanted me. So I, did, I just, I will show a few slides which I presented there to, to show them what we do. And they were so impressed by the by what we are doing here compared because one of the chairpersons, uh, what he told was, uh, uh, when they are, see what happens in the U.S. or U.K. when an aortic dissection patient comes, if you are in another area, Patients come in helicopter. They got a helicopter which land on the top of the hospital and they're treated immediately. So when I showed our patients coming by road and by buses, they made a remark. See, in, a, in, in the world, a lot of things happen. When the United States and other countries and patients come in helicopter, Dr. Bashi's patients come in bus, and but also he gets the same treatment or better than what we do. That's the comment they made. So I felt uh, very happy because. Uh, when I was doing uh, my cardiac surgical training in Bellevue in 1979, I joined with Dr. Swami John. Those days, heart surgery was in primitive stages. And a lot of uh, people who can afford to go to uh, abroad, I myself have given letters to Texas Heart Institute, Dr. Kulis Center. And not only big company executives only could do that, others could just die without lack of treatment. So that time I had took a decision in my life that if ever I get experience in this specialty, if uh, God permits me, I will definitely see that patients from other countries will come here and we will be able to give support and service to them during my lifetime, which I am very proud to say we are going to do that. So because when I work in Australia, I was asked to stay there for the rest of my life. I said, no, I came here for a purpose. I want to learn, I want to serve my own people who appreciate my help and needs my help. So I definitely don't want to say even one day here, I want to, and I thank them for giving the training which I practice even today. So I go on to the topic which I have to show you today, that is, uh, you can see the aorta is a bit of high blood pressure, all the range, you know, sometimes by birth, vehicles of the vessels, they can happen, that is one form of disease. Other thing is uh, dissection. You have to get treatment, otherwise if it, if it bulges out and blood comes out of the body, you will not survive. That is second form. Third is, to the risk factor of this is the smoking, hypertension and all those things. Third, what you see is in, in families, so you can see some families, people are very tall, very lean, long fingers, long hands. They have a high chance of getting well, a familial aortic disease where it weakens and then they can uh, develop dissection at very young age. And uh, I'm, we have some patients in the audience who had this uh, problem at the young age. I have uh, as young as 12 years, I have operated on a family of uh, three people in one family. The older people were smoking, hypertension is another thing. And the most important thing is, uh, like Dr. Raju mentioned, was the first thing what we do is a CT scan. That is, when a patient comes with a chest pain, suddenly it will be diagnosed as heart attack. 
Nowadays, uh, uh, just listening to the talk in London, they say if they learn diagnosis of chest pain as a heart attack, next investigation they will do a CT scan. Fortunately, in our uh, uh, country now, a lot of CT scan centers uh, are available. People are now complain about the cost is high, but it can, it can definitely detect a lot of diseases, which is more done in our country than other places. Because access to CT scan is not there in developed countries where you have to get a prescription. Here, if you have got money, you can straight away go and uh, go and get it done. But of course, people who cannot afford, definitely still a matter of uh, difficulty now. This is another way of, you know, aneurysm ruptures is what happens. If the balloon leg thing ruptures, suddenly the whole body blood can get empty. So that is why diagnosis, uh, early diagnosis, we can see that we are going to screen the people who are at risk, like people who are over 65 years with a high blood pressure, who are smokers, who have got a history of uh, heart disease in their family. They should get screened. And then treatment is, uh, you can see that open surgery we do. This is an animation of how we do it. Cool the blood. So very, we can see a lot of people, I don't know, you would have seen this is the operation. If you see like in my face, this is what most of the patients that we have undergone. They have opened the heart, opened the blood, put grafts, and then that is a, called a hybrid operation where we put a graft inside and then put a synthetic cloth. The patients ask me, sir, how long this cloth will last? This will last forever. So nothing to worry. So once you come out successfully, you lead a normal life, you will be able to carry your normal life. It's a completed operation. And that is uh, what happens if it occurs in the stomach. The aneurysm can occur in the stomach also. Inside the infrared layout, and you can be done with a very simple procedure around the stent grafting, like you do uh, stent grafting the uh, coronary arteries, you can do it. It's a very simple procedure, but expensive. The, the graft is quite expensive. But it can be done like uh, in two days and patient can go home. So technology is available, it is developing, so that a lot of these procedures can be done without a very major operation. A lot of research is going on in all over the world. So uh, that is one of the reasons we want to, uh, to create a, a, an aortic center, to, uh, to let people know the availability because once you have got a disease, you know where, what is available, how can be done. And this is the slide which I showed uh, in, in, in London last, that last weekend to show the transportation, the problem with money. It's a big problem because they have not worry about the insurance everybody has got and availability of a team. Where to go when a problem happens? Suppose you develop a problem, where to go immediately is a big question. So unless you are aware of where it is available, people will be searching in golden hour. We call it the golden hour. First about uh, three, four hours and you get a problem you have to see. And then transportation. See, air ambulance service uh, does not take off like what has happened. We are, had patients coming from uh, Vijayawada, I had a, a young girl immediately after delivery of an aortic dissection. She was transported 1,000 kilometers by road. It's very, very, very you know, I, I don't know how people come and they are in distress. How an uh, effective system can help, but uh, it just go along. It is uh, beyond my hands to decide only thing. What we can do as physicians and surgeons, we can treat them, but other infrastructure, other problems is beyond our hands. So lack of awareness among the people, the fear about operation. So one of the things I make sure is that, you know, before I uh, do any procedure, I make sure I talk to the relatives and people and convince them the advantage of the operation. Because when you say about surgery, people don't know about the, the, the advantage they get. They only worry because everybody gets uh, frightened and then tell only the bad things about the thing. And uh, to, when you, it's like getting a shock when you're somebody needing a very, very major operation. It's a mental, financial and physical strain for the patient and the family. So I make it a point that I myself talk to them and I make my colleagues also follow the same thing so that make the patient comfortable is very important. That's the most important duty of a doctor. That is, uh, in, uh, in the early 16th century, when the hospitals, uh, where the name hospital was not coined, in Germany, there was a place where the, the patients were treated. The word written there was, whoever comes here will be treated with affection, care and love. That is possible. Whoever comes here is being treated with care, affection and love. And the implantation of love in a human being is called medicine. That was a great plateau. 
So these things I always make sure I pass it on to my colleagues. Because sometimes when you are stressed with so many things, people ask a lot of questions, you know, the doctors may not have the patients to P-A-T-I-E-N-C-E. -E. So I said you need P-A-T-I-E-N-C -E to get P-A-T-I-E-N-G-S. Then only you have patients. <laughs> so that is also very important. To, then if you look at the incidents, you see we need to be operating about nearly 600,000 operations. And if you see, we are doing less than 1,000 cases only in India, which is a very large, a small number compared to the incidents. And then availability of this material, so we try to make sure uh, if we get all these things. You can see that is a cheetah. See, this, that is a sign of the world aortic disease day. You can see India's map in the right hand corner. We are out of all the countries, we have put our map there because of, uh, I personally wrote to the Mar Marfan Foundation and informed them we are also celebrating along with other countries. The important thing is, see, it walks very slowly, the steps, you know, the ferocious.
they sold it. They said that there is no, no doctor is there to treat here. So they referred me to Dr. Pashi. So it is my very good luck to meet to meet Dr. Pashi sir. And uh, I within one day I got surgery and I have been recovered completely. Now I am doing my all regular activities. Difficult. So uh, I wish Dr. Pashi sir to live a long life and serve the patients of uh, aortic aneurysm. Thirteen years back, in 2006, I became a patient of IOT reception. I had gone to one of the best specialist hospitals of Chennai. And they advised me that otherwise I won't survive. Fortunately for me, day before my surgery, the hospital had to be fumigated because of some infection. I said, no, I am not going to have any surgery at all, I am going home. All the doctors, the surgeon himself, they were really trying to convince me, my whole family went against me. They said, this man is losing his mental imbalance. I said, no, I am going home, I am not going under the undergoing surgery. They tried to stop me, I said, if anybody stops me, I am going to call the police. And finally they let me go. Came home and they said, okay, we are giving you three days medicines. After three days bring him back because we have to operate him, we can't survive otherwise. Two days gone, I didn't know what to do, what not to do. Third day, no, third, second day, my father comes out and says, son, there is an article in the Hindu regarding one doctor, Bhaji who is operated on dietic section. Just go through it. This is how I became aware of what Dr. Bhaji I have never seen in my life. Never heard of in my life. Nothing. I went through the article. I said, Dad, this is the doctor who is going to treat me. Get an appointment for him. He tried the level best Dr. Bhaji. Big man, never did no appointment, nothing. We had to use 30 degree buttons to get an appointment for him. Finally, the next day, went over there. He saw the huge bundle of investigations that are already undergone and everything, and even the report that I have to undergo surgery. He became very disinterested. I said, Doctor, and by that time I was using my tool because he was using his interest. I said, Doctor, I've got just one more dose of medicine with me. After that, I'm not going to take any medicine. Either you treat me or you don't, or I die there. So I don't know what the doc doctor said. He said, another bad man has come as a patient. All right, yeah, undergo all these investigations. Sorry, doctor, I, you are still saying Anyway, I went back, got all the investigations done. By 3.30 he came back and he said, uh, I think I am not very happy. Huh? We have to go undergo further investigations. No, I am an advocate, professional. I told doctor, I said, doctor, you are a professional, I am a professional. If you want to make some money from me because the normal practice of go on investigation, investigation and all that, I will give you a check, fill it up. But please don't use me as a guinea pig. He said, okay, I have got two more patients. Let me see them, then I will talk to you. Fair enough. It was about 5.35. Finally he called me. I was getting frustrated. I said, this man is going to go from the door and leave me to go away. He <laughs> called me at 5.35. And he said, no, I'll explain to you. That's what I appreciated the he said, I'd like to explain to the parents of the patient. I'm sorry to the family of the parents. Do the whole diagram. He said, look, you have been diagnosed by the earlier hospital as A, B, Iota, they know. They when they say surgery, so you have to undergo surgery. But if that was the case, you wouldn't be fighting like this and behaving like this with me. 
I think there's something wrong with the investigation to done. So I want this to be repeated again. And then he showed me the whole diagram and all that. I said, yes, this time is talking to sense. I said, okay, doctor. Sorry, I apologize for uh, thinking differently of you. Please tell me what I want to do. <coughs> this is how the story started with Dr. Bhakti. Finally, investigation was done. Imagine the main thing, this program. I didn't even know where to go. He was there at the time of uh, the angel and uh, being taken, virtually there. And he said, no, we don't need anything. We don't need something. Now I've got two reports. Three of the three good things which uh, myself and my family members we found. And I wish uh, Dr. Bashi and uh, Sims all the best. Thanks. Sir. The most uh, meaningful and socially valuable events I've attended in a long while. Because it is meaningful, because uh, apart from the information and the education it imparts, public education, it, uh, it, it, it shows the close connection between those who have benefited from uh, medicine, state of the art medicine and also people who care, who are healers, more than just uh, technical people, scientists and so on. And that has uh, made this special. And a few experiences we heard about uh, from, you, you don't want to call them patients, you call them survivors. Is that right? But those who have benefited from this uh, medical knowledge and treatment, few experiences we have heard have uh, underlined the fact that this is very meaningful. This is in fact uh, strong, a strong connect. There is emotion, but there is also truth that underlies it. Because every one of them spoke, uh, in what, uh, whether it was long or short, about uh, their own experience uh, with uh, aortic disease and uh, how the challenge was overcome. So that's why I think it's uh, useful. I'm delighted that uh, we have, all of us together, launched India's first exclusive center for aortic uh, diseases. It's quite a modest claim. You didn't say that this is best and so on, but the first, which is a, which is a fact. But I can assure you that uh, this is the best. Way and ahead the best not just as a center, but a team of people behind it. And now with uh, infrastructure provided, I also want to compliment Sims and my friend uh, Ravi Puchabhutu. I know the family very well, SRM. I'm on the uh, board of governors of one of their universities in, uh, in Amaravati in Andhra Pradesh. Uh, and I know uh, many members of uh, that family will support this. So far as the SRF uh, hospital is concerned, since hospital is concerned, SRM institutes for medical science, uh, very, very impressive. I've taken people there, uh, and uh, there are <coughs> excellent specialists, there are young people as well, and the, the willingness to commit resources, people resources, and infrastructure to uh, provide state-of-the-art medicine, I think, is commendable. And we had a, a, a peep into the kind of care that is taken in uh, the operating room to, avoid it, to minimize or avoid in infection and so on. This is excellent. So I'm not surprised that uh, SIMS has launched the first uh, aortics, uh, ex first exclusive aortic aneurysm center in yeah. Now, a few words on my friend, Dr. Bhakti. I think uh, I, I, I was, uh, I knew him through other senior consultants, or senior doctors, K.M. Jarian and especially Dr. T.J. Jarian, my old friend. Because on one occasion when I, a friend of mine from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka Tamil, who is 
very fine writer who has written a large number of novels and other books, has been in India for the last, since the 1980s. He's a diabetic, but a very disciplined man. When um, he had a heart problem, I went to Dr. Chirian and asked him, you know, there are various famous surgeons here and who should I take him to? And he said, without reservation, Dr. Bashi. He said, he's the best we know, the whole of South India, and perhaps the whole of India, and he was much younger than, than he was today. That patient, my friend, is now 91 years old, and uh, I keep in touch about Dr. Bashi's methods, partly through him, because every year, he goes for a review, he comes back religiously and uh, reports to me on, on the findings. Uh, I also observed another thing about Dr. Bashi, because I have to set up more centers of this kind in different parts of the country, particularly in, in small towns and so on. Or if they can't set up a big center in a small town, at least to facilitate transport to and uh, reliable access to other centers on reference and so on. Uh, some of the advantages uh, in India have already been mentioned by Dr. Bashi, for example, on CT scans. Uh, I asked them how much it costs, and I was told it's about eight to 10,000 rupees. And uh, for those who cannot afford it, I think it has to be subsidized by the government, by insurance, by, uh, by various ways, by foundations, and so on. So not a single person should suffer or die because he, he or his family, can, he or she or his family cannot afford uh, to do what is uh, minimum, minimally required in this case. So I think all these things have to be done. This is an opportunity, as I said, very meaningful and a valuable meeting for people like me as well. Because I think we all learn from that. We learn from the patients or survivors as well. So I wish uh, Dr. Bashi and his team and since great success in this, they also are willing to share this knowledge. He gave us some insight into that, and people call on how, what, how to do it. You have to share this knowledge, not treat it as some kind of uh, traditional secret, uh, and so on. All this has to be done, but today is a happy day for all of us, uh, this formal inauguration of this center. I wish you great success and express my admiration for the wonderful work that you have done. Especially as it is his own, he started it himself. Thank you. Our team guest for the event. Uh, round of applause. <laughs> An exclusive Iota Aneurysm Center website. Cardiothoracic surgery to please come and give us a few details about the website. This website is exclusive here. So, what our Dr. Bajaj has explained to you over here, and different sectors like thoracic aneurysm is there. The details of this is here. What is the website? Website address ioticaneurysmcenter.com. About the details about the Abdominal aortic aneurysm is also here. And a special mention about the Marfan syndrome is also mentioned over here. What are the details, what are the problems caused with Marfan syndrome is all in detail in this website. And this is a unique website where you get the interaction also there. Patients can interact here as well. So certain patients are far away, they have done a CT scan and images there and they don't know whom to consult, how to consult. They need not fly down here 
and get an opinion. So these patients can load the website here, load the files over here. And this, once your file is loaded and you can click the button consult, the email alert will come to us. So immediately the opinion will be given and deciding upon that expert opinion, then you can travel further. So this has been done. So you can note down your websites and whenever you want any consultation, you can come to here. Thank you. Can I have a loud round of applause for the new helpline number? I would now request Dr. K. Murali to please come forward and felicitate I have been given the present task of proposing the vote of thanks for this unique function. We all know there is no exclusive center for aortic aneurysms in the country and we have made a decision to launch this and in this regard it's my present duty to propose a thanks to our chief guest Mr. M. Ram the Chief Managing Director of Hindu Publishing Group. Sir, your words of wisdom has definitely enlightened us and we will definitely carry your advice to make this center as popular as possible. Thank you very much. by a very experienced surgeons and physicians and technical staff. And the hospital has invested very well in this. There's a real need and I think they have gone quite far in backing this centre, making it possible for it to do. But it is the product of a vision of one of Dr. Bashi, who has been in this field for several decades. One of the first in the country and uh, certainly the most uh, accomplished surgeon in the country in this particular field. Everybody comes here. And now uh, the, they have undertaken to share their uh, excellence, their knowledge, their skills, their capabilities, and uh, invest in their time and effort in training people elsewhere because more centers are necessary. Because uh, Facilities are not available in India. And awareness is not also, there is no awareness of, of the seriousness of this disease. It suddenly hits you and you're dead or you're, uh, you're very seriously affected. People, even doctors are not often aware of this. So the whole effort is, is admirable. It's a progressive effort. And I'm sure it will succeed because they have invested in this uh, center of excellence. Even before, we, before it is launched, we can say there is excellence there because they are already doing it. But now they are focusing more on the on building excellence in a center and also spreading their, their knowledge and skills elsewhere. So I think uh, it's going to do very well. Some center, yes, uh, there are two things. One is to create uh, people the awareness of the disease. So as you say, prevention is better than cure. So you find out the disease before it reaches advanced stage. Because you know, if the patient uh, is suffering from the disease for a long time, suddenly it's a silent killer. You die suddenly within three minutes. If an aneurysm ruptures, uh, the death happens in three minutes. Time. But if it is picked up early, you can suppose uh, you screen people and find out the disease can follow them up and decide the timing for surgery before it gets advanced. That is one part. Second part is to give the best treatment which is available in the world is available in our center because uh, we have uh, 
good uh, team of developers which I am getting. And uh, we get the experience and technology from every center in the world who is doing IoT surgery because we, we go for meetings and uh, get uh, exposure to all these things and bring back those technology here and practice here. So there is no dearth for uh, technology and experience team. But only thing it is available only in very few centers and as Ram also already mentioned. So our idea, idea is to get doctors from other parts of the country, train them. We are starting an IoT training program for surgeons. Uh, at least uh, two surgeons uh, will come in our center and get trained for six months to one year. And then get exposed to the work here. And they can go back and do the same procedure. Because, uh, you know, I had patients coming from, you know, airlifted from Bombay, airlifted from Sri Lanka by air ambulance for aortic dissection because they don't have the facility there and uh, we have treated them. So if these facilities are available in a local place, uh, you know, uh, where the surgeons are able to tackle it, we can prevent a lot of death which is happening to people who are at uh, the prime of their life. Usually it happens in people who are younger. Sometimes uh, we have seen today like 30 year old, 35 years, 40 years, suddenly it gets a shock in their life. The whole family is you know, totally devastated if, if a breadwinner of the family dies suddenly of a disease. It's, uh, suddenly it happens uh, with no warning. So, as I said, one is make awareness how we can prevent it and how we can treat it and spread the message to the people because people are not aware of uh, people talk about uh, you know, heart attacks and other things. So even when six lakhs of people are going to die with this disease in a year, it's our responsibility, social responsibility, to reduce these events to the maximum possible because we have got the capability of treating them and put them back to their feet. Friends in families. Secondly, it affects in older age people who have got hypertension, uncontrolled blood pressure, smoking. Then another thing also, one of the points we were discussing in a recent meeting uh, when we were attended is uh, uh, one member of the family developed an aortic aneurysm. That family members has got three times higher chance to develop an aortic disease. So if a one family, somebody has got aortic aneurysm, we better to screen other members so that they are also uh, caught early. Plus uh, proper control of blood pressure. One of the problems which I face uh, in our country is, you know, suppose somebody comes with a high blood pressure, you give the medicines, after one month blood pressure becomes normal. Then somebody will say, BP is normal, why do you want to take the medicine, stop everything. That should not be done without concern. Because when you have high blood pressure, definitely you need medicines. And there are plenty of medicines without any side effect. We can continue lifelong. I have patients, I'm treating for 40 years, 45 years with hypertension, doing very well and patients dying without treatment within years. So it is important of our people to be aware because nowadays uh, half-baked knowledge is available in WhatsApp and the internet. They say, oh, somebody will come and say, why you want to take medicine? This has got so many side effects. Blood pressure medicines are very bad. That's a very bad thing, I find. That is one thing. Secondly, smoking, of course, government is very strict about their put control and you know legal things. So smoking is a very, very important. I find that 90% of the patients coming with aneurysm will be smokers, especially who come in old age. So smoking is a very, very, very high risk thing for plus hypertension.